Okay, so I'm not going to make the final introductions. I'm going to invite our CEO, uh, Javier de la Torre, back onto the stage, who is going to bring them onto the stage. We're on a bit of a tight schedule, so sorry for the rush. There you go. Clicker, okay. clicker. I don't think this is working. Yeah, now it is. Hey, everybody. So uh, I'm very glad, you know, to, for this final session. We have two great guests and a great announcement to do uh, for the last uh, session. So I want to welcome here Luis Cuello, Vice Mayor of Madrid, and Abigail Banks, Head of Partnership at Waze. Please welcome. So, yeah, please, please. <laughs> Uh, oh, be, oh yeah, yeah, please join us, yeah. So um, we're going to have a little bit of a panel, but we have a few slides. So uh, I'm going to start myself, you know, just talking a little bit about what we want to tell you today, and then I'll leave them some time, and hopefully we'll have some time for questions too. So um, let me start by, you know, like stating something that we all know, right? Uh, that cities are changing really fast, are evolving really rapidly. So it is estimated that 79% of the world population will be living in cities by 2050, right? So in, in 26 global cities will be smart cities by 2025. There's 16% annual growth in smart cities market until 2019. I mean, this is just a few facts to, call, like, you know, to let you know, you know something that you already know, which is there's a very big opportunity to work with cities in the context of location intelligence. And in fact, in Carto, we are already doing that. So, um, We've been working, you know, from the really beginning with cities like in New York City, at the city of Melbourne, uh, Mexico. So some of them are here, and I think, you know, like we are, uh, we're very proud of the work that we do with them on helping them to to, um, to kind of be more optimal, be more transparent, etc. But today I want to tell you a little bit about mobility, as we get a a great kind of like uh, announcement to make. Uh, oh. So what are the things you know around mobility that is happening right now that I think is important? Most of them, you know them very well. So things like bike sharing, right? So that's, you know, like something that, you know, like multimodal car like mobility is becoming really, really ubiquitous now around the world. So car sharing, even, you know, a scooter sharing. If you go now to San Francisco, there is this company, well, there's several now, you know, like that, you know, like have these uh, scooters free on the streets, and you can take them with your mobile app, and there are electrical scooters, and you find them now everywhere. So there's clearly a lot of things changing around mobility. It's not anymore just about cars and buses and subways. It's a much more complex ecosystem now. There's another thing that is happening. It's around air pollution. So uh, stronger regulation and you know, the need you know, to control more air pollution in cities is really changing the way that we, uh, you know, like, uh, cities have to react to, uh, to traffic. Right, so from Criti Air, you know, like uh, stickers for you know, like uh, uh, um, you know, like different type of cars. To uh, you know, even in, in Madrid, we have a, a, a protocol for you know, like cases of you know, like um, uh, high pollutions. You know, like this is putting a lot of you know, like uh, new requirements towards how we handle mobility. Pedestrianization. So uh, it is you know, like one of the biggest trends. The closing of roads. In the, in the center of the cities, the closing roads to cars to enable, you know, like more livable cities is something that now is an ongoing movement, a really, really fast movement. Um, also connected to traffic calming, really. I mean, like here we've seen Copenhagen, you know, did it in the 60s, but now it's a really big movement to try to change, you know, like the, the model of cities on how they work inside. In fact, actually here in Madrid, uh, the Gran Via, which is the biggest, uh, I'd say, you know, like the biggest street in Madrid or the most centric one, um, you know, like it's going through an, uh, a major transformation. It used to be a, a street full of cars, and now it's actually, you know, right now as we speak, you know, there's constructions to change, you know, like the mobility of that entire part of the city. So uh, with less lanes for cars and more space for pedestrians, it's really changing the way that we, uh, that, you know, that street lives and breathes. Right? And by the way, I like this picture because if you haven't seen, our office is just there on the right. So our, our new Madrid office. So, so we, we see every day, you know, like, uh, you know, like Gran Vía changing. We also see things, you know, use cases around security, right? So with, uh, with the tragic kind of like events, you know, recently in several cities, you know, like how do you handle, you know, like security in the, in the public space? It's also something very important. And safety, type of vision zero projects. How do you reduce traffic accidents? And you know, like, how do you ensure that you know, like, cities are more uh, are safer for pedestrians and everybody? 
So those are a lot of different things, you know, a lot of different use cases that cities are thinking about. And the reality is that all of these things that I talk about can be a study and should be a study and are being studied through location intelligence. Really, you know, coming to the, to the topic of, you know, like the, um, uh, I, mean, well, I mean, the theme of the conference, location intelligence is everywhere. But in the case of cities, even more from my point of view. So it is the perfect explanation of, you know, like a type of use cases where you can do plan your actions. You can, you know, like think about, like you can predict, you know, what it will happen if I close a street, what it will happen if I divert traffic, what, if I, what will be the economic impact, what will be the mobility impact, how much, how much is, you know, like going to change, you know, like those are a lot of, you know, like possibilities that we have with location intelligence for this type of use cases. And also, very important, how we communicate it to citizens, how we make it, you know, like citizens understand those changes, understand that they're based on, um, on relevant information, relevant, you know, like analysis that have been performed to understand the consequences. So that's also a very, very important part of location intelligence. But to do a lot of this, as you all of it know, you actually need a lot of data. And that's normally one of the biggest challenges when working on this type of projects, is that you don't have enough data. Data about traffic, about how they move, how people move, how you know where do they spend money. You know, like all these people, all this type of data is a requirement to satisfy location intelligence in these use cases. And this is why I'm very excited today. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. Finally, cities are just growing too fast for creating that data. But you know, like this is why I'm very excited today. Really, is you know, like we are announcing a partnership with Waze and the City of Madrid to get to enable waste data inside the Carto platform. So from now on, you will be able to call, like, if you are a city as part of the Connected Citizen program that a guy will, will tell us a little bit uh, later, you, know, like, you will be able to get access to the waste uh, data to use it in your analysis and to use it in the applications and solutions that you're building. And we are testing it first, we're developing together with the city of Madrid. So we think you know, like the city of Madrid, apart from you know, like being where where we based, uh, you know, our office here in, in Spain. It's also, you know, one of the cities that are taking, you know, like innovation in a, in a, in a more interesting way. I think, you know, like they're doing a lot of projects that they can facilitate, you know, like the, the, the intersection of this data and these new technologies for this particular type of use cases. So we're very excited about working with them to refine the type of solutions and the utilization of waste data for cities. And we're going to be seeing uh, a lot of uh, in, the, in the next months coming from that. Um, we do have... <coughs> Yeah, a little video here. So this is the first solution that we've actually introduced. In. It's called Traffico. So it is a solution based on Carto engine, which uses the data from Waze to show in real time the status of traffic. This is the, this is the basic data that Waze can provide us, right? But it also gives us things about like incidents, how many you know, like incidents in different parts of the city. And what we do is we store it historically, all that data, and then we perform analysis to predict what will happen in the future. Right? So all that is part of a solution we're calling Traffico. So as you've seen you know, from this uh, conference, using AirShip, using the new engine capabilities, connected to a location data stream, is a perfect example of a location intelligence solution or app as we call it. So um, that is actually available as of today, since you know, we are today announcing officially the partnership with Waze, and I cannot, uh, I cannot you know, wait to, to see you know, how, what you guys think about it. So with that, we got I'm yep. going to take it to you so that he tells you a little bit about Waze. Thank you. Uh, oh, no, the one on the right. Yeah. That one. All right. So thank you very much, Javier, and good to be on stage with Javier and Luis from the municipality. Uh, good to be here today in general. Uh, my name is Avichai, or Avi for short. <laughs> uh, and what we're going to do today is going to take about 12, 13 minutes to talk to you a little bit about Waze as an introduction. Uh, deep dive into a program that we launched about four years ago called CCP, uh, Connected Citizens Program, and uh, how we can actually utilize our data in the best way for citizens, for drivers. And lastly, uh, stress again uh, what, what uh, Javier just announced, the new partnership that we kicked off with the Madrid uh, municipality, thanks to Carto uh, Intelligence Locations. Um, how many Wazers in the audience today? Okay, good to see. Um, so. In general, uh, Waze. Waze is a navigation and traffic app. It's a, uh, globally the largest uh, crowdsourced navigation and traffic app that we have in the world. We have over 100 million active users. Uh, when we look at our main mission at Waze and what we're there to do, is basically save time for people. And if we save about five minutes approximately 
for every, every user out there, then we feel we did something big. And that's our main mission. Um, our main mission changed uh, slightly. And uh, in the past years, it was always saving time for people. Now we have a new mission. And our new mission is to kind of end traffic. Uh, it's, kind of a, it's, kind of, it's kind of up there and kind of a, um, too powerful, maybe, to say to predict that we'll end traffic. But that's our main mission. Uh, we launched a Waze Carpool. And basically, as we spoke earlier, we want people to drive together. And if you look, uh, we didn't invent Carpool. Carpool has been around for decades. 20, 30 years ago, people used to commute together. But if myself and, uh, and Javier are driving, for, and we live close to each other, and we're driving every day to the same as uh, to the city center uh, and back home, why don't we carpool together? If for the same uh, time and energy, we could, we could actually maximize our trip. And that's something that we launched uh, earlier the, uh, two years ago. Uh, we're now active in all of California, mainly in the Bay Area. We just launched Carpool in Texas, and many more markets are coming up, such as Brazil and other markets in Europe. Um, it's a big project that we're, we're focusing on these days. <laughs> so basically, this is a ways win. What you see up here, instead of getting stuck in congested traffic, bumper to bumper, you want to be that guy in the SUV kind of bypassing traffic and saying, okay, I'm going to save some minutes, some time. And at the end of the day, this is what we want. We want to have more time, more time to get home faster, to get back to our, to our sports event faster, to get to, uh, back to work faster, whatever it is. And if we save a few minutes a day, then we did something quite big. Um, at the end of the day, this is how the map looks like organically and, and very alive. Uh, basically, what you have here are, are map editors updates. Waze has 500,000 map editors worldwide. These are map editors that have the hierarchy and the... And the, and the authorization to edit the map. On top of that are all these 100 million active users, including yourselves and myself and everyone here today, that actually use Waze and passively are contributing to the community. So our algorithm is built in such a way that all you really need to do is drive with the app open, and we're already translating that to real-time updates. That, along with the map editor's uh, uh, updates, along with other sources that we have, are basically kind of creating this live, updated, crowdsourced, real-time uh, map. So as mentioned, 100 million active users. Biggest markets are, are France, Italy, UK, Spain, uh, Asia Pacific, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, big markets. Um, Israel, where uh, Waze was headquartered, is a big market for us. And of course, uh, the US. Uh, together, we have over t almost 20 billion miles, uh, sorry, this is kilometers a month. Almost 20 billion, this is, again, this is, uh, when we look at all ourselves as, as one big community and how we contribute to the bigger picture of, of, of eliminating traffic from our, from our life. Um, Waze as a brand has huge magnitude. Again, because we're crowdsourced and all what we're doing is from the community. So there was a survey by the top 50 brands in the world. Number 35 is Waze. Most of these companies here have a huge personnel and, and manpower working at Waze. Uh, Waze is not a big company in terms of the people that work for Waze but much bigger in number 35 in terms of the community that we have. And that's where Waze fits in. Waze has a big emotional effect when thinking of Waze as a brand. Um, and it, just to be up here with these 50 biggest brands worldwide, it gives us lots of uh, gratitude and appreciation. Um, fitting from this, let's go on and try to talk a little bit about Connected Citizens program and what we launched. Um, so taking you a little bit to the imaginary kind of impact, let's try to imagine that we knew what's going to happen the next day. And of course, not in everything in life, but about the, about the city aspect, about traffic. What if we knew where the potholes in the city are? What if we knew if there was, God forbid, a hurricane last week, which traffic lights are working, or which gas stations are open, or any kind of infrastructure project that's going on, or a governmental project, or any other natural disaster that happened and kind of changed the way the mobility is that day? So if we can imagine that we knew that, and then upon of that, actually see it. Let's try to imagine that we can actually see these updates in real time. Lastly, let's take action. So if you knew it and then you saw it, and lastly, you can actually act from it, and kind of the derivative would be change your plan and kind of bypass the traffic or bypass the congested area, then you did something big. Uh, this all leads to the streets of tomorrow. This actually leads us to where we want to be, about the urban city, about how we want to build smart cities, Thousands of people move every day to these big metros around the world. Cities are becoming much more congested, much more air pollution, much more people stuck in traffic. And, and, and big metros are having this pain of how to manage a city in the smartest way possible. Um, 
these kind of things led us to where we are today with CCP, which I'm heading to in a moment. Uh, we also learned that uh, City is obviously a live organism. It's something that is dynamic and it's changing everlastingly. This is how it's going to be. Uh, these are main arteries in the city. Uh, but the heartbeat of the city is basically the community of the users. Basically, all of you, all of us, all our, our biggest map editors and those 100 million active users which were growing and growing daily. So if we kind of use all this data together, then we can actually save traffic in many ways. Um, in October 2012, there was a tragic and, and, and severe hurricane in the US, mainly hit Florida. Uh, what happened was uh, the White House actually called Waze and said, guys, you know where the gas stations are open. You know where the shelters are, such as we can. If we can communicate this through Waze back to the user, then we did something big. And that day only, we, we kind of updated where the open gas stations are and where the shelters are, and more and more people actually headed to the shelters. And as you know, after hurricanes, gas is a, is a necessity. Most gas stations are closed. So we updated the ones that are open on the map, and people actually saw that and kind of uh, uh, used that information. Um, as it says here, 10,000 gas shortest responses were just updated in that one week. Um, and actually, I, w I will say that tragically there was a hurricane. Luckily for us, we understood the, the, the data that we have and how we could utilize the city and help crisis responsors, municipalities, city halls, governments. And basically, we created a Connected Citizens Program. And that's a, connected, that's, a, that's a program that we have today at Waze where we actually connect with different cities and municipalities and governments. Uh, we see it as a free two-way data exchange, how we're connecting with public partners and how we can use their data and they use ours and we bring it back to the citizens, back to the drivers, back to the community that we owe them for just using ways and for living in the city and want to get to where they, want it, to where they need to get faster and safer. And this is, these are the kind of partners that we're looking for. Um, type of partnerships. So we're, we're partners with, with uh, uh, DOTs, driver, uh, driving um, uh, department of transportation, municipalities, city halls, governments, uh, emergency responders. I'll show you in a moment how we actually, we actually kind of, disp kind of c uh, connect the first uh, responder to the crisis area in the fastest way possible. So basically now, ambulances and 911 emergency vehicles are arriving to the place of the accident faster than what they would have if not using Waze. Um, we're reaching overall almost 2 billion people uh, which is a huge and massive of people that we actually can communicate with. 40% of these partners that we have are, are top cities and top metros. Uh, we have today over 600 partners. Uh, again, the partners that we're looking for are, are emergency responders, municipalities, governments. When they have the data of their users and we have data of the same users and we exchange it together. So it could be the Pope that's visiting in town, it could be a marathon in the city, it could be road blockage, it could be any kind of uh, infrastructure change traffic lights that are changing, et cetera, et cetera. Short video, um, I think the voiceover in this video is a little bit better than mine. <laughs> so uh, allow me to show you a three, four, three and a half minute video that actually connects, explains a little bit more about, about the program. When Waze first launched, its core was about outsmarting traffic together. CCP is the next natural evolution of Waze. Now we're really talking about saving time for millions of people. Our drivers are out on the streets every hour of every day, reporting the most accurate information on closures and congestion. We are taking that information and delivering it to the government officials who can address incidents in real time. This is a real program with real impact. We're actually sitting down with partners and having measurable results every day. Boston is a city of around 600,000 residents, but during a typical workday, we grow to over a million people. Waze has allowed us to rapidly iterate through experiments to see what sort of effects interventions have on congestion and traffic. We had a major snow last March. Seeing the data come in from Waze every two minutes allows us to grab user reports and then we can respond to those reports in a timely manner. Genesis is a software company that provides solutions to help first responders. By putting Waze inside our Genesis Pulse product, our first responders are saving five minutes and that saves lives. 
We didn't expect that so quickly we would have cities redistributing traffic personnel, that we would have 911 systems relying on this data. As more data comes online, Waze is proud to bring together innovative transportation leaders from all around the world to develop the next chapter in traffic management. At the core, CCP has the same mission as Waze, which is to save people time every day. It's showing us what our new goals are going to be. New forms of safety, new forms of urban mobility, helping cities become a lab for making lives better. So basically the data exchange that I was mentioning, this is what we want to give and get from, from these different uh, partnerships. So when we give, uh, giving Waze data, um, basically the, the city updates us about road closures, about incidents. Is there a blockage in the city? Is there a traffic light that doesn't work? Is there a pothole in the middle of the, of the highway? Is there some, some event going on? Is there a big concert? Is it a big a soccer game, a football match? We want to actually utilize our data together. We could bypass traffic, we could set uh, cars in a certain way. We could actually, uh, have, if we have a major traffic event, uh, such as a, a football game, and we can actually have all the parkings uh, in a certain area, so on. Uh, the way, uh, what we get in return, uh, the, way, the way we communicate this is are th through three different parameters, either through a Waze API, where we connect with, with the government, with the municipality, through Traffic View, which is a live map where the city could update in real time, and with email alerts along with push notifications that we send back to our citizens, back to our drivers. So if there's a marathon going on in the city, we'll send you a push saying, try to get out of this street and bypass it by that one, etc." cetera. Um, so as we saw in the video, crisis responders are actually, um, we're, we're kind of, um, if when there's a, an incident, an accident, these first responders get to the place of the event five, four and a half minutes faster. These are big surveys that we've done and we tested this and ambulances and, and emergency vehicles are, re, are arriving to the place of the incident faster. So normally or traditionally when there's an accident, someone calls the police, calls the ambulance, and it's very hard to describe where you are. You're in the middle of a highway in a certain traffic light, you don't know exactly the name of the street. But Waze has exact accurate coordinates. All you gotta do is click on that icon that says accident or by voice command, and basically these first responders are using this data, and that's how they arrive faster. Um, so approximately four and a half minutes. Uh, program impact, so besides, uh, besides first responders, we have a few others that we've been doing. We have many, many case studies, and uh, due to time limitation, I didn't bring all of them today, but just very few uh, before, before I, I, I end my uh, short presentation. So 10,000 potholes updated with the uh, cooperation with Washington, D.C. Potholes could be a severe issue in the city, and a change in infrastructure that the citizens and the uh, commuters need to know about. So this was a great uh, cooperation that we did with them. Uh, in Rio de Janeiro, garbage trucks. So if you knew where the garbage truck is, instead of getting stuck behind them, you could bypass that and, and get, take an alternative route. That would be saving time. We did a partnership with them. Uh, a different, another partnership that we did with them, so there was the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and we built three highways according to the data that they gave us. They didn't know where they should place those highways, these new streets. And with using ways and our reports and our live stats, basically they understood where they should utilize the best, where the main arteries are, where the biggest pain of, of traffic is, and that's where they place these highways. And altogether, I think there were over 10,000 updates in real time, which they used to build these streets. City of uh, Ghent in uh, Belgium, so they took a project, they wanted to kind of eliminate traffic within the city, the main arteries uh, that bring you into the city, along with trying to reduce uh, traffic, uh, air pollution, um, because there were so many cars in the city. And there were thousands of updates within this partnership, uh, 2,000 map updates. Uh, this is how the city looked like before, this is after, with road closure, with updates on, tra on traffic lights, with less cars in the city. Uh, from this case study, we understood that A, there were 30, percent less traffic accidents, vehicle accidents, 27 percent uh, more people, there was a lift in people uh, using cycles and uh, bicycles and, and transit, public transit, and lastly, air pollution was reduced by 15 percent. So this is all again by the updates of the community. Philadelphia, I mentioned the Pope before, but 
When, they, when he travels, there's a lot of, we, we see this as a major traffic event, and we try to bypass this traffic. And here too, there were many, uh, many, many updates, and we kind of reduced it by 20% by his previous visit in somewhere else. So we're seeing how these updates in real time are utilized, optimized, and given back to the community in the best way. Um, lastly, um, so as Javier already announced, uh, Madrid, the city of Madrid, uh, Waze, and uh, due to Carto's uh, help and assistance and partnership with Waze, we basically recruited uh, Madrid as our new city, our new Connected Citizens program. And as of today, we'll be sharing data with one another, using this data in the smartest way possible, and sharing it back with you, with the community, with the users, uh, with our everlasting growing community. Um, so thanks again, thanks to, to Flo and Ian from, uh, from your team, thanks to Javier, the CEO and the founder of Carto, and of course to Luis from the municipality, which is going to take over and say a few words as well. Thank, Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, trust no slides. <laughs> I leave the slide. You can see the audience. Uh, first of all, uh, very welcome to Madrid. I think, uh, I hope you will enjoy your city apart from this hall. Uh, we are very proud to announce this alliance with two giants, us, uh, Cartu and Waze, uh, to join to our efforts to work together. This is a story of shared intelligence and technology and community. This is the, to get all our efforts joined to make real the promise of you can move. You can move in the city, you can, um, you can't, um, not waste your time in transporting because the real interest is where you come from and where you are going to. So uh, Madrid is involved in a very ambitious program of public-private partnership. This is not just a story of private companies making business or public regulations uh, creating an official reality. This is a story of working together and I think this is a good example. Uh, we have created last week, and I told Cartu and Waze to invite them to join us, a very important hub of mobility, of innovation on mobility in a very special place we have in Madrid that is we call La Nave de la Innovación, the boat of innovation. In an industrial neighborhood, we are creating all the intelligence as we can. Madrid is in a very good moment in terms of mobility sharing cars, 2,000 shared cars are moving in Madrid. You can take it where you want, you can leave it where you want. It is a difference of other cities that you are obliged to put the car in the station. You can move freely in that. The public bicycles, electric bicycles, are moving thousands of citizens every day. And um, two great projects are going to change the mobility of Madrid in the next months. Uh, Javier showed us the city, the main axe of Gran Vía, but the central area we call zero emissions area will begin in September, restricting very, in a very severe way the private car uh, tra of traversing the, the area only for neighbors, for commerce and public uh, transport. I think we have in Madrid one of the most cheap and quality public transport system, joining metro, buses, and bicycles, sharing cars, and taxis. We are worried about the future of the business of the taxi. We have to be flexible to join the efforts of this community of, of professionals to compete with fair rules, with Blah, blah, car with Uber, with other competitors. They are very restricted regulations that they say we can compete freely. We want and we are very conscient about this problem. Also, we are very concerned about the responsibility we get when we transfer public data to a private company. We are very conscient of we feed a much more wide program leaded by, leadered by Google that uh, combines mobility data with purchase data with other data we want to share 
because it's, it's voluntary. Nobody obliges you to do. But we know that the Agency of Protection of Intimacy in Spain is very strict, and we, we are very happy with that, to be guaranteed our intimacy. So the open data p page that Cartu converts in intelligence, because it's not enough to give data. Someone, someone like Carto must to convert that data in intelligence. And with a partner like, like as uh, Waze, we reach the citizens. It's not enough to say, I have the data. We, you must assure that you reach the citizens. This combination of our data that we actualize, we put new data every two minutes in the web, with intelligence and with connectivity, joining with the data the citizens by themselves want to share, this is a good, this is a, a story of success. And we are very happy to be in, the, in a very promising project. We will put all our, honestly, all our efforts to be a good partner, controlling the intimacy, giving opportunities so the citizens take their own decide, decisions. Because as uh, you say, Davi, the citizens is the goal, the final goal, and their decisions will, will be the important decisions, not what we thought it was they need, and we will have to learn every day of the citizens. So, very happy if, uh, in the name of, of Cartu, of Waze, and the City Hall of Madrid to be in the, in the very advanced in the innovation and to be part of this uh, community of cities to share data, to make simulations of what's going to happen, because finally, and I uh, end with this, it's not very sexy to know that you are in the traffic jam. I know, I don't need a machine that tells me I don't want to get in the traffic jam. I, I must decide to go in another way. So these apps that you use to, to your life can be better, we are very happy to share with them. Thank you very much. All right, well, I think that makes it, again, thank you very much, you know, to the uh, Hall of